Hello and welcome to Mary Live. This is Dr. Mark Miravalli. Uh, my friends in Jesus and Mary, it's with a particular joy and excitement uh, that I announce to you and introduce you to uh, words I believe are directly from Jesus Christ and from Our Lady regarding a proper appreciation of her role in the redemption. And that's all categorized under the title Mother of the Redemption. Now, once again, there's, there's many different alleged and reported locutions and apparitions. I just have to say that I truly believe uh, these are authentic. They're of a supernatural origin. I, I truly believe that. Uh, and I think the truth of them manifests that supernatural authenticity. You, of course, have to judge for yourself and, and discern with your heart. Uh, but I, I want to mention that these messages come from an Alea apostle. Uh, it is the movement called the uh, Direction for Our Times or uh, Apostles of the Returning King. And these are messages that just came at the beginning of 2024. Uh, and I want to read the messages to you. And really, I see it just one more effort of heaven to get us to appreciate the true incredible role our Blessed Mother has as bridge between God and humanity. She's completely human, but she's also immaculately human. And her perfect response to the will of God uh, has allowed her to not only bring God into the world in Jesus Christ, but also to be this transparent, this, this, this beautiful, immaculate channel of graces from Jesus to humanity uh, as the mother of all people. So let me uh, just, I want to read, there's three messages I want to read, so uh, I ask for your patience. Uh, I'd rather you hear it directly in the words of Jesus. Uh, and again, that is uh, my conviction. You have to make your own decision to sermon about this. Uh, Anna Lea Apostle has been very much supported uh, by uh, her the previous local bishop and now by the present local bishop uh, in her diocese in Ireland. Uh, she's a mother of six uh, and has been receiving locutions uh, since the year 2000, always in complete obedience to the magisterium of the church, always calling us for a joy in service, uh, a rescue mission for souls, which is a, a way we talk about uh, our universal call to be co-redeemers in Christ, as St. John Paul II would say. And let me preface this by saying, of course, uh, if you're familiar with uh, Mary Live and, and my work, you know that it's very much focused on the fifth Marian dogma. Let me say right from the beginning, this is something distinct from that movement, although I find it to be, of course, very complementary because it's seeking to profess the, the whole truth about Mary. But once again, this is distinct from the movement for the fifth Marian dogma, and it should be uh, examined and uh, I hope promulgated as such, as a distinct, uh, as we're going to see, request from Jesus to use our various means to get the truth about Our Lady out. So, without further ado, let me read these messages. And, and again, uh, let me mention straight up, these messages are available on the website directionforourtimes.com. Directionforourtimes.com. That is the website uh, of Anna Lea Apostle and the Apostles of the Returning King. So, this is January 2nd, 2024. Words of Jesus, quote, My mother's human heart was firmly and irrevocably attached to my divine heart. Your heart also remains attached to my heart. You struggle with temptations about my church. I understand, of course. This, that is the burden of one called to impact the thinking of of those within it. My mother did not struggle. Mary never entertained temptation of any type. Mary, as mother of the redemption, gave birth to my church because of her fidelity to the father of us all. Only a human being could deliver me into humanity. Only a human being could form the original apostles after my death, resurrection, and ascension. Within the title of Mother of the Redemption lies the fullness of Mary's unique role for the Father. Within this title, all other titles are contained. Let me say that again. 
Within this title, all other titles are contained. Just as Mary gave birth to the truth about God, me, that is Jesus, you must give birth to the truth about Mary. Will you help me? Will you help our mother? Will you use your gift to introduce a crucial piece of the truth about our mother? And this is needed at our excuse me, this is needed at this time. She is the answer, our lady. The fullness of time includes this role that came into being at the moment of her immaculate conception. She is the mother of the whole plan for the redemption of mankind. Nothing less. Nothing more is possible for a human woman. In the fullness of time, Mary could do no more, and no person but Mary could do what she did with God, our Father. Outside of time, in eternity, Mary cares for her children by bringing them to me, Jesus Christ. As my mother, she is automatically your mother and mother of all God's children. Mankind has been redeemed through one action, mine. Mankind is brought to me through as many actions as there are people. Mary, in her eternal reward, is the highest of all humanity. She is free to act on my behalf in all matters concerning her children. All of humanity is a gift to Mary from God the Father because of her selfless and total collaboration with him. She alone is worthy of acting as mother of humanity. Each little baby created into being resonates with Mary's love. Truly, each baby has an eternal mother and an eternal father. I am the redeemer of each baby. Do you begin to grasp the vastness of this woman and her place? She is the queen of heaven and the mother of all people, and those roles have been given to her because of her first and greatest role, mother of the redemption. Now, my friends, that is just pregnant with the best of the mirological truth that have come down through history, but but combined in a way I believe only, only Jesus could combine it. What does the title mean? What does this role of mother of the redemption mean? It means that from the moment of her immaculate conception, God predestined Mary, planned for Mary to be mother of all things that affect our salvation, our redemption. Most of all, of course, bringing Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, into the world. But it doesn't stop there. Uh, Mary loves Jesus. She sacrifices with Jesus. It's prophesied at the presentation. She will suffer. Her heart will be pierced with the heart of Jesus. Uh, I mean, Think of the uh, 30 years before Jesus enters the public ministry. Mary's serving him and loving him. And who is he? He's the Redeemer, the Divine Redeemer, God and man. And then, of course, it's Mary's yes that, excuse me, I should say Mary's yes brings Jesus into the world, but it's Mary's intercession that brings forth the the first public miracle of Jesus, uh, that she, in her maternal solicitude for the couple at the wedding, invokes Jesus. And we see the power of Mary's intercession when Jesus says it is not yet time, but because Mary asks Jesus, it becomes the right time. And that leads, as John Paul II would say, from Cana to Calvary. Uh, That's the road that ultimately will be Mary's climactic role with Jesus at Calvary. Uh, But then it doesn't stop there either. Uh, After, she's the mother of the apostles. She's mother and teacher. She's present at Pentecost. Uh, And then it continues to our very day. You get the idea. Mother of the redemption seems to include every aspect of the redemption planned by the Father, wrought by Jesus Christ, and sustained by the Spirit. But it all happens through Mary. And that's why this is a truth that has to be spread. It's really something that Jesus, uh, you know, asks us, 
you know, will you help me? Will you help our mother? Will you see your gift to introduce a special piece of the truth about our mother? Uh, she is needed in this time. So, and that's why we're spending the time to discuss these. But in terms of, of the, the Mariology contained, it's of the most beautiful and sublime. Now, I want to also say, uh, Anna Leigh Apostle has written a really extraordinarily beautiful commentaries and, and explanations of these messages, which I highly, highly recommend. Uh, they're also really inspired. Uh, but I want to read uh, the second message of Jesus, which comes at the end of Anne's uh, commentary on this. And again, uh, go to directionforourtimes.com uh, to get these. They are uh, now available. Uh, and again, uh, well worth reading. But I think we have to surmise that Jesus is asking everyone to use their particular gifts to spread, to spread this truth. Uh, that could be just in your household. It could be friends. It could be prayer groups. Uh, but this is a truth about the mother that Jesus himself is asking us to spread. Now, this is January 7th, uh, 2024. Again, bear with me as I read this, but I want you to hear these words, uh, which I believe are directly from Jesus himself. He says, quote, At certain historical moments, I send assistance to mankind to help protect them from suffering. Only heaven can see where true danger lies in terms of the purpose of suffering. While mankind must reap what he sows to some degree, there are moments when to do so would destroy the future. Therefore, heaven, meaning God, in union with all who dwell in his power, act. We are approaching that moment. Mary, our mother, is the constancy in the excuse me in the constancy of her wisdom, also sees a threat to her children, and she too is poised to render assistance. Those who understand my mother's place as the direct agent of God's infinite mercy will recognize her presence and her authoritative voice in these times and the events to come. The more people who link their commitment to God through our mother's cause, the greater her effectiveness. Mary facilitated direct contact between God and humanity. She will do so again for those willing to humble themselves to her service. Mary's way is the way established by me personally. She was my first and greatest disciple. For my church to become who she must become in these times, Mary's gentle but insistent voice must be heard. God entrusted to Mary the plan for the redemption of mankind. She protected me and cared for me like the greatest human mother. But Mary contributed far more than that to the cause of mankind. She mothered the redemptive plan into and through time, so that my perfect sacrifice could be placed at the highest jewel in the human history of God's connection to his people. When you contemplate Mary's extraordinary contribution to my life and death, you will begin to know, excuse me, you will begin to know that she is not only the first doctor of the church, she will be the last. Follow my mother's prompting and leadership, and the bridge to my plan for the church and the world will be secured. At this time, the father's children are separated from their happy innocence by a relentless assault on purity. Mary, stainless, fears nothing. No human being knows God like Mary. Therefore, in the mystery of humanity's constant intercessory prayer, Mary is the key, but she must be seen and heard. If Mary is seen and heard, the contribution of women can be rightly drawn into my church. This will create the necessary stabilizing factor and provide the life force that Mary drew upon to form the first apostles into the correct representation of me in the world. Because the holy influence and sweet authority of women is not only absent, 
but mocked in my church. Fragmentation occurs. A unifying force is discarded when it is urgently needed. People of my church, I died for all of humanity, not just a small few. My church is intended to be a light to all nations in every time. But to the very inner rooms of my church, there exists grappling for human power. What will it win you? Do you think you will be better followers of me because you seized human power? You know better, yet you persist in an example of the most negative spirit offered to God by mankind. It is not your leadership that can help me correct the course of my church. It is the leadership of my human mother, the mother of your redemption. Humble yourselves and follow Mary first into unity within my church, then to its rightful place as light for all nations. Okay, now a very strong message. And, you know, if you're surprised by uh, our Lord speaking strongly about the need for the church to self-examine, uh, I'm not sure you're taking a real honest look at the state of the church right now. The church is in crisis. Now, I take a bullet for the Holy Father. I take a bullet for the church. Uh, and that's why, in love for the church, uh, I, as as most contemporary uh, ponderers of the situation of the church, says, yeah, the church is in crisis. There's got to be a, a purification that happens. Uh, what is Jesus saying in this message? Uh, not only is he talking about the incredible role of Our Lady as mother of the redemption, all aspects of the redemptive plan. Our, married mo Our Lady mothered that into history. But he's also saying, acknowledging Mary, having the humility uh, for certain men, even men in leadership, to have the humility of listening to the mother will both lead the church into a correct mode uh, and it will also properly raise women to a new appreciation within the church. Here's the bottom line. Women offer an insight, uh, uh, a feminine a wisdom in ways that, that men lack. And that's okay because God made man and women, men and women. And this in no way is seeking to undermine legitimate hierarchical authority, of course. Uh, that would be heretical. But it is to say for reconciliation and for purity, there's got to be a new openness to the unique insights of women. First of all, our Blessed Mother. So, again, uh, and uh, let me just, again, uh, I want to point out uh, what our Lord said at the beginning of this, that, you know, she, protect, she, she protected me and cared for me like the greatest human mother, but Mary contributed far more than any other to the cause of mankind. She mothered the redemptive plan into and through time so that my perfect sacrifice could be placed at the highest, as the highest jewel in the history, human history, uh, excuse me, in the human story of God's connection to his people. She's the first doctor of the church, but she will also be the last. What does that mean? It means Mary's role in the redemption is not just ancient, it's contemporary. It's uh, her role as mother of redemption is ancient and new. That's why we have to listen to her now. That's why it's so important that Mary's rightful role in the history of redemption be acknowledged. Uh, and, and we're all called to help in spread that truth uh, as per the invitation of Jesus himself. Uh, now, I want to close by reading a brief message, uh, typically humble, uh, from Our Lady uh, herself that came at the very end of the locutions. And once again, uh, please go to directionforourtimes.com. Download these or examine them on, 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 on your computer and, and listen with the heart of your soul to these messages. You'll get a sense about whether you believe these to be supernatural or, or not. Uh, for the third or fourth time, I just, again, want to offer the testimony that uh, my heart burns when I'm reading these messages. I, I, I know them to be true personally. I know them, again, to represent the best of Mariology of, of 20 centuries and beyond. And beyond. Because Our Lady is, is uh, 
of the church, but she's beyond the church. She gives birth to the church, uh, as, as we heard Jesus say. So Mary is our mother, automatically Jesus. That's because Mary is Jesus' mother. Don't separate the head from the body. Uh, and so when Mary gives birth to Jesus, she also gives mystical birth to all of us. Okay, finally, this is January 8th, 2024. Uh, and starts with a, a personal reference. Anne, I want to answer your question uh, because Anne had asked, uh, what is your role in the church in the world? He, he asked Our Lady uh, for this, and so Our Lady responds. And I want to answer your question because I share your desire to help God. If God were to show you where I was located, you would know that I can be everywhere I am wanted. As you saw in the heavenly city, this is during Anne's experience in heaven, I was with my children who wanted to be with me on my feast day. I am given the greatest amount of latitude because I create better conditions for God's little children through the most effective intercession. When someone experiences my love, they know that God loves them. I represent only God and only God's interests. I have no other desires but God's desires. Those who entrust themselves to me know that I serve their cause tirelessly because I remain close. I remain determined to advance their condition and the condition of their families. I am wherever my children are, in both heaven and earth. Because God gives me so much, I share an endless supply of sublime supernatural graces with humanity. I am a mother who has been given everything she needs to help her Lord. I am the daughter the Father created for the purpose of mothering the most important plan. I will lead humanity to the answers, but I must be brought to humanity correctly as a constant servant and mother of the plan for the redemption of mankind. I will make my presence known. You must make my character and my influence known. How again, uh, you know, only the mother can, can give this balance of a true authority, but with... Um, ubiquitous humility. So you know, what does she mean by that ending statement? Um, I must be brought to humanity correctly uh, as a constant servant and mother of the plan for the redemption. That means anybody who puts Mary on a level of equality with Jesus is not only talking absurdity, and I don't mean to be insulting, but it's really absurd to compare uh, a human being with God in terms of equality. Uh, but it's also so very misleading of and, and really antithetical to our mother's plan, which is to bring us to Jesus. God wanted us to have an eternal father, but also an eternal mother. That is a perennial mother uniting us to Jesus. That's the role of Mary. That's why she is, uh, as, as uh, she says, the source of all supernatural graces. So, my friends, ask this question of, your, of yourself. Uh, why have you heard this message? What does our Lord want you to do with this information? The answer will be different for all of us. Uh, but I take to heart our Lord's request to make this truth about Our Lady known. This role of Mary as mother of the redemption. That means mother of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and mother of the whole plan of the redemption from her immaculate conception to this present day, because both Jesus and Our Lady in these messages refer to a certain critical moment of where we are out, and, and that's why it's so important that we acknowledge the mother, we acknowledge her authority in the church. She's a member of the church, but she's also beyond the church because she gives birth to the church. And we listen to her directions, her inspirations, in humility, we should do it. The hierarchy of the church has to do it because that's God's remedy for us is the mother. So I ask you to prayerfully uh, consider this. Again, uh, get the message one last time. Directionforourtimes.com. 
Um, and again, Anne's commentary on this, I think, is really extraordinary as well. These messages, I believe, come from the heart of Jesus and the heart of Mary to each one of our hearts. Thanks for listening. God bless you all.